So why we can trust the King James Bible and can't trust the other ones? There's a sentence I'm going to do a couple, three times throughout tonight. The King James Bible, that's this one right here in my hand, the same one that pastor preaches from and everybody here teaches from, is the English Bible, obviously not Norwegian, translated accurately from the text best supported by history. We're going to revisit that a couple times tonight. Okay? So when someone says to you, the Bible, what do you think of? I do want you to raise hands or say amen. something. What? I said amen. <laughs> amen? When I, th- when, I th- when I say the Bible, you think of amen. Anybody? Anybody? What do you think of? The Word of God. The Word of God. Okay, that's one. Anything else? Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. What else? The Bible. Like, you can get the motorcycle Bible. I mean, you can get the Zen Bible. I mean, what's, what's a Bible? A book. It's a book. You got it. You know, I went three steps up there. Here we go. So, what's in the book? Does anybody ever read the Bible? Raise your hand if you ever... I know there's people over there. Hi. What's your name? Michael? Good name. That's my firstborn name. Yeah, right... You can raise your hand. Have you ever read the Bible? If you've ever read the Bible, raise your hand. Okay, put your hand down. If you, ever, if you brought a Bible, raise your hand. Okay, good. That's important for later. So, in the book, is it a book of suggestions? No. No, it's not. Is it a book of fairy tales? No. You already know where this is going, don't you? <laughs> is it man's attempt to reach God? No. Wait... It isn't? No. Because I've heard an awful lot of philosophers, and I've heard a lot of teachers saying it's man's attempt to reach God. I had seminary professors. I, I'm a minister. I, I had professors at Fuller Seminary in Pasadena, California, tell us that it was pr- the prophets were people who were looking at their life situation and in their meditation about the things of God, got these ideas and wrote them down. Seriously. Those are professors, PhDs. That means piled higher and deeper. Ask your teacher what's piled. No, it's not man's attempt to reach God. What is it? It's God's attempt to reach man. This is the book, unlike any book in the entire world. No religion, no cult, no philosophy, Nothing, no political group, nothing has a book of God's attempt to reach man, except we do. So what did God use to try to reach man? First question, did he use nature to try to reach man? This is a trick question. Did God use nature to try to reach man, yes or no? Yes. yes. Give me an example. Can you say it loud so everybody can hear you? Romans 1, uh, 18, I believe it is. So it's from um, the creation of the world being clearly seen by things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are that excuse. Romans 1, 20. Right, and the Psalms says their line has gone out through all the earth. Yes, God created nature to bear witness to God, but you know what God, nature cannot tell you? Go to Proverbs chapter 30, not now. But in Proverbs chapter 30, there's a prophecy of Solomon. There's a prophecy, and it says a bunch of questions. It says, surely I, have, I don't have the understanding of a man. I have no wisdom. I have no knowledge. I have got nothing. I got nothing up here. Then he says, who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath done all these things? What is his name and what is his son's name? Those are all who questions. Nature can never tell you who. Only revelation from God can tell you who. Get it? Nature can tell you what, but nature can't tell you who. So, what about personal appearances? Any personal appearances that God did? Has God ever made a personal appearance on earth? Yes! Yes. Any examples? Who did God appear to? Raise your hand. Tell us somebody. Somebody. Anybody. Jesus! God appeared to Jesus? <laughs> who did God? Who did God appear to? Moses. Moses. That's a good one. Who else? Abraham. Well, obviously, the disciples is Jesus. What? Who? Who else did, did Jesus appear to? Do you ever think about it? Adam. 
Who's talking to him in the garden? No man has seen the Father at any time. You have to see the Son, so that means it was Jesus in the garden. Who talked to Abraham? Jesus. Who appeared in front of Zechariah, Ezekiel, Isaiah? That was Jesus. So personal appearances, yes, but that's not enough. Miracles. Did God do miracles? Lots of them, but did he do them all the time? No, because then it's not much of a miracle anymore, is it? Right? There's a lot of people say, well, if you say the special words, God is going to do these things for you. I command God to do this. Yeah, no. That's not God, is it? That's not him. That's not what he does. He doesn't do miracles at our command. He's not our magic man. And he's not a book of spells. I came out of the occult. I know about that stuff. No, holy men wrote God's words. You know why? Because God doing great stuff is great. But what happens to the next generation? They forget all about it. How many of you remember World War II? Exactly. You weren't there. You can watch it on television or YouTube, except they took most of it off. You can, you, it's being censored right now, but you can hear about it from other people. But what's reliable is when people start to write things down, especially if it happens to be God who helped them write it. Right? God's attempt to reach who? Man. And man means male and female. Call them men at the day when they're created. So why? Because God truly loves us. He made sure we have what God wants us to know. That's why holy men of God wrote it down. I wrote a book called Babylon Religion. Yes, I have a few of these books here. There. <laughs> it's a flying book. It's a special kind. <laughs> Babylon Religion. And here, one of the things that was really revelatory for my life was realizing that God, by giving words and writing them down, he did what the cults didn't do in all the religions. When you go in the ancient Babylon religions and you follow through and you follow through Syria, Assyria, Syria, into Palestine, Canaan, and down into Egypt, and then the spread that happened after that, you find out that they didn't write things down for a long time. And those cult groups kept on changing the stories of what really happened. And so it became legends. And then the legends became myths. And eventually the myths became rituals and they wrote them down and they made their little cult groups. And that's how they did their little religions. Really interesting stuff. But that's not the way God works. In the beginning was the? Word. And the word was? The word. And the word was? God. Yeah, it's the same as in the beginning with God. God reveals through the word. Second Peter 1.21 For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of Man, sorry, fuller professors, but holy men of God did what? Spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Anybody tells you that was their own recollections? No, it was not. That was God speaking through them. How did he do it? I don't know. I'm not God. See, that's one of the easy things. It's my favorite six word response I don't know. I'm not God. I may not know everything, but I know someone who does. Amen. Holy men of God wrote God's words down. So, where are they now? That's the question everybody wants to know. Where are God's words now? If you're a linguist, you're trying to translate things. If you're an anthropologist, you're trying to dig up things. If you're a theologian, you're hiding off someplace making up things about God. But if you are a if you are a Bible translator, Bible researcher guy, then most likely you are looking around for the word of God. Why? They're looking for it. They're looking for it a lot. So is it lost? If it's lost, then we haven't found it. Just remember that. If the words of God are lost, we haven't found them. Do you think they're lost? No, but there are people who do. That's why they go down to Egypt. That's why they dig up inside and they go into caves over in the Dead Sea. And they keep on looking and looking. Well, I don't really know what God said, but I'm sure I'll find a cave that's deep enough and dark enough. And I'll find some piece of paper or some piece of animal skin. And I'll put it together with a computer and I'll analyze it with my microscope. And I'll come up with something. And we'll say that that's 
maybe a little closer to the Word of God. That's what they do. How about, so it's not lost. Is it found? Who knows Joseph, who Joseph Smith is? Joseph Smith Jr., anybody? And you know about the religion that's connected to Joseph Smith Jr.? Mormonism. Mormonism. He believes that... Let me tell you a simple story. There was once a little boy in a little art class. And he's sitting there like this and like this. And the teacher wants to come and see what little Johnny's drawing. And he's coming to see and saying, Johnny, what are you drawing? And he says, it's a cow in the, in the grass. And you look at it, and it's completely white. And the teacher looks at that and said, um, where's the grass? Oh, the cow ate up all the grass. Where's the cow? Oh, the cow went to look for some more grass to eat. Like my picture? That's like Joseph Smith. Now, I, I found a book in a hill because of an angel who gave this book to me, and I translated it by the power of God into the Book of Mormon. Oh, cool. Can I see it? No, the angel took it back. Oh, well, can you take me to the hill? Oh, the hill's over there, yeah. Can you take me to the hole in the hill where you got the book? Oh, no, it's not there anymore. It's not. Can I talk to the angel? No, he's ascended back up into heaven. Like my book? Trust me. <laughs> see, no, it's not found. If you, if you believe it's just simply found, then you have to mean it was lost for a period of time. But God said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Jesus thought that was so important. He had Matthew and Mark and Luke write it down. So there are three times in Scripture just to remind you. So no, it's not found. It's preserved. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Psalm 12, verses 6 and 7. God never lost his words, so we don't have to go hunt for them. Do you know how many people would lose their jobs right now if they believe that? There's a bunch of people still going around hunting for God's words. Like, what are you hunting for? Snipes. You ever gone snipe hunting? Yeah, you go out there. Do you guys know this? You guys know what snipes really are? Oh. No, no. Okay, I'll let your teachers take care of that one. <laughs> snipe hunting. No, no, what are we looking for? We're looking for God's words. We've got to hunt them. We've got to find them. There's got to be God's words around here somewhere. You know, it's really funny. This is a simple thing I want you to remember. If you guys ever go into a future class where somebody tries to cause doubt into this book for you, you say, okay, let's say you go into a cave and you find a piece of paper and it has different words from what's in this book. Why would you believe it? How do you know it wasn't some ancient cult? Why wasn't it something that was spread around? See, Jesus said, my words shall not pass away. What are those doing hidden over there? If they're hidden over there, then God didn't keep his promise. If you're trusting him, God didn't keep his promise. God kept his promise to keep his words out. He said, what I whispered in your ear, I want you to say off the housetops. In other words, I want everything to be open. Proverbs 17.24 Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of the fool are in the ends of the earth. They're going to the ends of the earth to try and find God's words to this day. And they're right here. If you have one, hold it up. If you have a King James Bible, hold it right up near. Okay, so there you go. Where are God's words? They're right here. They're in the King James Bible, in your hand. <laughs> So now we come to the next question. How do we know? Let's go back to that statement I started with. The King James Bible is the English Bible. It's not Swahili, just in case you're wondering. Translated accurately from the text, best supported by history. So let's talk history for a second. The Old Testament was translated in what language? Anybody know that's not an adult? Hebrew. Hebrew. Oh, that's, a, that's the quietest answer I've ever heard in my life. It's just kind of... Kind of just drifted among the people. That was wonderful. Yes, it was in Hebrew. New Testament was in what language? Greek. Greek. Yeah. <laughs> Greek. Why Greek? Raise your hand if you know. Seriously, raise your hand. Try that. I mean, it's a really good thing. It's an exercise and everything. Yes, why? Greek was the main language. The main language, otherwise known as a world language. Yes. Also known as a what kind of language? 
trade language. Greek was the language that everyone spoke when they already had a mother tongue. So if you lived in Lydia and you lived in another place in Africa and you lived in Put and you lived in somewhere else, you were a Parthian, a Mede, an Elamite, an Israeli, wherever, all of you spoke what language? Greek. Greek. So God said he wanted his word spread all over the world, so what language did he choose? Obviously Parthian. No, me, no, Greek. Because it was time when Jesus came, three things came together. There is the Pax Romana, that's the peace among nations. There is the Roman roads that brought everybody together. Why? Because Rome wanted to tax them. <laughs> but nonetheless, it made transportation good between everybody. And third, a common language. Koine Greek, Koine simply means common, like a coin. Koine, just a common Greek, a trade language. Now it's been translated to English. Actually, it's been translated to English for over 400 years. God spoke it. Good men wrote it down. Good men made copies. Then the copies said the same thing. The good men also made translations. And the translations said the same thing. Doesn't sound too difficult, does it? You won't believe people who have problems with that. I mean, professors, PhDs, again, piled higher and deeper, those people. It's like that. But look at this. What is that? Come on, you guys. What is that? What does it look like? It's a something. It's an ins but say it again, louder. Instruction manual. It's some kind of instruction manual, and it's in different what's. Languages. Languages. It's a no-brainer. What do you mean you can't translate? People, you can't translate from the Greek and the Hebrew into the English. You have to learn the original Greek. Really now? Then what's that? We do it every day. We all Every day, we have multiple version translations. Every day. It's a no-brainer. It's called translation. You see, because... When God separated the languages at the Tower of Babel, he didn't make different brains. He just changed the symbol system in it, creating a whole new language. That's all he did. He used the same brain. So, can you translate from this to this? Yes! Well, the, uh, the Alaskans have 22 words for snow. Yes, I know. There's soft snow. There's hard snow. There's chunky snow. There's, there's slushy snow. Oh, well, I just did it. I use something called adjectives. <laughs> there's not 22 different single words, but I can come up with two words that end up saying it. Or sloshes on your feet and it feels like a dog going do. I mean, that's the kind of snow. You can, you can say it with a big phrase, but you can translate it, right? You don't have to have a single word. Don't let anybody fool you. And I'm not, I'm telling you, when people like Fuller Seminary, you know, abandon faith, all ye that enter here. I mean, if you walk in and they take your faith away from you by telling you all this holy claptrap, but then they take away your Bible from you in the process. They, say, they used to tell us, that when you're preaching, it's a heavenly time when God is interacting with the preacher. They didn't do it like that. They, they talked in normal English, but they just said, God is interacting with the preacher, you're having this holy thing, and they're interacting with God through you. That's a high, called a high view of preaching. But this is a book. Low view. They held this with a low view. The low view of the Bible high view of preaching. In other words, priestcraft. They're making you worship a man. They say, well, you're just worshiping a book. Well, if that book is exactly like God, that's pretty close. If it connects you to the right guy, that's the right book. All right, let's keep going. Don't let anybody fool you about that translation thing. You're going to hear it. I guarantee you. We translate in multiple languages all the time. 2 Timothy 3.15, if you know it, you can say it with me, read it with me. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now think about this. 
Did Timothy have the originals? There's people saying, I'm OAO. Anybody ever watched Wizard of Oz? Yes. Yo, oh, no. oh, hey, oh. Well, I'm saying OAO, original autographs only. Yo, oh, yo, OAO. Oh. Yeah, original autographs only. Only the original autographs are inspired, everything else is uninspired. Believe me. No, I don't want to believe you. I want to believe what God trust, trustworthily blah, 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 preserved. I want to believe what God preserved for me today. That's what I want to believe. I want to believe what God put in my hands. So you're to talk to a person who has a chance of going to hell. Nope, 100% chance. Everybody's unsaved, 100% chance. Two, two things they're 100%, 100% chance of. One, they're going to die. And two, they're going to go to hell. And then they're going to be judged. And then to be thrown in the lake of fire. That is out of the frying pan, into the fire. 100% guaranteed. Wouldn't God want to have you show them a way out? Do you really want them to go there? People say, you're teaching hatred. Really? We said hatred. We say, no, go ahead. Please go. Go to hell. Go. Go. If we really hated them, we'd want them to go there. It's because we love them that we don't. All right. Other men didn't believe what God said, so they changed it. What are all the other Bibles? People didn't believe this book. I can't get much more simple than that. They didn't believe this book. They didn't like this book. This book calls you out. When you read this book, I have so many Bibles, more than you've probably ever seen, in different languages as well, and um, they don't call my sin out the same way, especially in English, because people translate Bibles to make them comfortable. This Bible makes you uncomfortable because it calls you out. I have to go before the Lord a lot because I keep on finding out where my problems are. Because God wants to fix them. But you can't fix them if you don't call them out. Right? Or they took it out. They could take out the words too. And then they put their own words in place of God's words. You can't get more simple than this. But there's people all over the world who are telling you that you need to follow a Bible that's made this way. Where they take out God's words. And it only takes a word or two to change the meaning. The devil can change a doctrine by just changing one or two words. Want to see an example? Yes. yes I do. So, let's pick an important doctrine. Let's see if what's changed matters. Did Jesus lie? No. Jesus said, I am the... Say it loud, if you can say it. The way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The way, the what in the life? The truth. The truth. Did Jesus lie? Lying isn't a small thing to God. Look what it says, Revelation 21, 18, uh, 21, 8, I mean, pull out a bunch of other words, but murderers and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Revelation 21, 8. I don't think people want to be there. All liars. So it's no small thing with God to lie. Raising my own kids. We, they can get away with a lot, but the one thing I do want them to do is tell me the truth. You can go through a lot of stuff. You can sin. You can have all these things. My kids are all grown, and they're very wonderful people. But we told them, the one thing is, you've got to tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. That's the one thing I will not support. If you tell me the truth, I'm behind you. We'll get through it. But don't lie to me. It's no small thing with God to lie. So did Jesus lie? What do the Bible versions say? Get ready. John 7, 8. Read it with me. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. See, it's, it's time for a festival. And they're up in Galilee, and they've got to go all the way down to Jerusalem, about 70 miles. They've got to work their way, come there. Actually, they've got to cross the Jordan. They've got to, all the way down, got to avoid the Samaritans. Cross the Jordan, go all the way down, go across the bridge again, come back in into Jerusalem. And then you go up a hill. That's why it's go up to the feast, because Jerusalem is on a high hill. You, and you've got to go up a few thousand, 3,000 feet from Jericho. So we go on up to this feast. And he said, I go not up what? Yet. 
Now, if you say I'm not going up yet, it means what? You are going up or you're not going up? You are. You are, but when? Right then? No. When? Later. 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 Exactly. You see, you guys are smart. Now, this is the ESV. If you want to talk to John MacArthur and you want to talk to all the major people on TV, you want to talk to all the big evangelists, they're using this Bible. This Bible. You go into seminaries and Bible colleges, they're using this Bible. Read what it says. You go up to the feast. I am not going up to this feast, for my time is not yet full come. So we have not yet versus not at all. Are they the same or different? different? Pretty different. You go up to this feast. I am not blank. What happened next? Believe it or not, just two verses later, Jesus what? He went. Look at that. Verse 10. This is in the ESV. The same Bible they use on television. As seen on TV. But after his brothers had gone up to the feast, then he also went up. Look at the top part. I am what going? Not. And then it says in verse 10, two verses later, then he also went up. That makes Jesus lie. If Jesus lied, he isn't the truth. My professor, it was um, Ralph P. Martin at Fuller Seminary. He told us it's okay for Christians to lie because Jesus lied to his brothers. He was on a Christian radio station. I have a, a little tract on that. And uh, it's uh, No Liars in Heaven. I should bring that by. No Liars in Heaven. And it came because somebody told me they'd read one of my books. Uh, I think it was this one. Look what's missing. And when they read it, they said, uh, you won't believe what just happened. And they sent me the radio program on MP3. And the guy, and I'm not going to tell you where he was, but he was in Texas. But I'm not going to tell you which place he was, though. It was Criswell. But um, when he was on a radio station, he was telling, he was one of the professors there. And he was telling him it was okay for Christians to lie because Jesus lied to his brothers. But if Jesus lied, he isn't the truth. The ESV says Jesus lied. So is the... ESV saying that Jesus isn't the truth? That's what it says. This is what happens when people go to seminary and Bible college and they start checking their Bible that their professors and their friends and their preachers have been telling them to read. I know that some of them were my friends. And people lose their faith because of a messed up Bible. Does it matter? And it isn't just the ESV. Let me show you a little bit. All these Bibles are also missing that one word yet in John 7, 8. You see the Christian Standard Version? You know, that was amazing. Up until 2017, the Christian Holman Christian Standard had it right. And it said not yet. But in 2017, they reissued it and took it out. So they made him a liar. Good News Bible, New American Standard. You can see I'm picking some of the ones you recognize. How about those? Net Bible, New Living, New Revised Standard. I mean, New Revised Standard and the NIV. And they held it right from 1978 through 2011. In 2011, they reissued it. And when they did that, they took yet out. They had it all those years. They had it right. I had to change my book because of that. The next printing, I took it out. All right, and they make Jesus into a liar. That's 24 Bibles right there. That's 24 known Bibles. That's Bibles people use. Even Catholic Bibles. And this is just one verse. This book right here has 256 more verses. And that's not all of them. All these were changed, and even that is only some. There's a lot more. It's actually 8,000 changes, but that's another story. So what do changes like this do to your faith? Your faith. Your faith is all you get. That's how you get to heaven. Do you realize that? Do you realize that? Your faith is how you get to heaven. There is no other way. Your faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ is your Savior. Your trust that He will do it and that He did the work for you. There, it is works to get to heaven, but Jesus did them. And your job is to have faith in Him. And then because you have faith, everybody has a measure. God gave it. 
he allotted to everybody a measure of faith. And when you place that faith in Him, then the Holy Ghost comes into you. And then you become a new creature. You know that? Any man of in Christ, he is, in a, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You have a new thing called the new man. Remember, man, male, female. It's not about that. This new person. That new person. And it's also called that which is born of God in 1 John. In all those places, it's talking about that new creature. When your body goes, and this dies right there, or you go, Somebody comes and butta butta you. The body part, the flesh goes away. But that new you, if you're saved, that goes right to heaven. Dude! Do you know no one saved person gets that? Only you who place faith in Jesus Christ get that. Only you. No one else. What did Jesus like this do to your faith? Do you trust these Bibles now? I just gave you one example. There's 256 more just right here. And I gave him the book. You can look them up for yourself. Okay? Can you trust these Bibles? Those are some of the ones from work. Um, I've been collecting for a while. Chick had some, and I brought a whole bunch. And that's not all of them. I have more in the office, the, the more rare ones I stick and keep in the office. Can you trust these Bibles? Romans ten seventeen. can you say that with me? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So, if it doesn't produce faith, it's not the Word of God. Think about that. God said His words would produce faith. Only one English Bible has done that for over 400 years. Are you with me so far? All right. Here's the quick point. For over 400 years, only one Bible. I mean, I've done the research. I was anti everything I'm telling you tonight. Completely. I was a top student in my Bible college and went to advanced Greek at Fuller Seminary. I went right into advanced classes and studied, Debbie and I studied Wycliffe, Bible Translators, the Summer Institute of Linguistics. We were planning on going out. We had all this, everything was set up for us. We had our future set up. And then God said, eh, wrong Bible. We had to find out we were wrong. And this is how I spell we. <laughs> we were wrong. But for 400 years, missionary movements, the world's largest missionary movement was, was started because of this Bible. No other Bible. There isn't any other. The giant waking, awakenings that happened. This Bible, not any other. My point is, this book is the one that did it. This country was founded on belief in this Bible. Our jurisprudence and our legal system. Founded because of belief in this Bible. 400 years, tried, tested, and proved. And all they can do is throw mud at it and say bad things. Don't believe them. The King James Bible. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that the devil would just sit on his hands and let it happen? Do you think he's got, you know, they got their Bible and, oh well, I guess I lost. Do you really think the devil's going to do that? Yes. No, of course not. Or do you think Satan might make his own Bibles? with words changed to take away your faith. Do you think so? Do you know, there's, I don't know many Bible scholars who even think about that. They hardly talk like there's a devil. It's like, if there's a devil, do you think he's going to let this happen? Of course not. Remember this. If you have 99% God's words, we're almost done. And 1% man's words, you no longer know which words are God's words. Oops. Oh, what was that? We actually brought something today. We brought some nice chocolate swirled uh, cupcakes. But you know, they might have a little bit of something mixed in. Just a little bit, not much. What? It's really good. Would you still eat it? I mean, yeah. Listen to him. What's your name? Sebastian. Look, remember, it's mostly chocolate cake. Mostly God's words isn't good enough.